Today is the fourth Sunday in Lent, also called Laetare Sunday. At the end of today's gospel we read, And he fled into the mountain himself alone. Jesus often goes off by himself alone to pray, in order to give us an example to follow. A few weeks ago we recommended that everyone adopt the habit of spending one hour a day in prayer. We think of prayer as hard work. So how does the saints do it? Some of whom would spend hours a day in prayer. In fact, they would spend hours a day, or recall the story of one who had spent eight hours, and when his superiors interrupted him, he asked for a quarter hour more. What do the saints know that we don't know? What is their secret? They knew that we are created for prayer. And that should become second nature to us, as it did to them. Prayer is our life. We read in St. Matthew's Gospel, Take up my yoke upon you, and learn of me, because I am meek and humble of heart, and you shall find rest to your souls, for my yoke is sweet and my burden light. Let us consider the goal of our prayer. St. Gregory the Great says, the grace of contemplation is not one which is given to the highest and not to the lowest, but oftentimes both those who are the greatest and those who are the least receive it. Oftener those who live in retirement, sometimes even those who are married. There is no rank or state of the faithful from which the grace of contemplation is excluded. What he is saying in essence is that all of us can acquire contemplation. In fact, we all should. So what is contemplation? I'm reminded of the story of a simple laborer who spent all of his spare time in church. One day the priest caught him on the way out of the church and they asked him, what do you do all that time in the church? And the laborers just simply said, I look at Jesus in the tabernacle and he looks back at me. He understood contemplation. He understood prayer. It was extremely simple for him. It was not laborious. And let us also consider a man and woman who are in love with each other. When they are apart, they long to be together. And when they, get, they are together, they are there in love with each other. True, many words may not have to exchange between them because words is not what it's about. It is the action of love that exists between them. They are just simply in love with each other. We should be simply in love with Almighty God. We should be contemplating God. This is the goal of our prayer. So basically, contemplation is simply loving the God of love. Contemplation is a foretaste of heaven. Heaven will be a place of perfect happiness and peaceful contemplation of Almighty God. So let us prepare for heaven here on earth. Let us get one foot already in heaven. So when the time comes when our soul leaves our body, we're already halfway to heaven. I recently read that purgatory also is a place of divine contemplation. We are very happy to be in purgatory for one simple reason. We can no longer offend Almighty God. But we suffer because we have so offended Him in this life. Instead of listening to the good advice from books, sermons, and spiritual conversations, we have followed our own path. We have led a life of laxity. We have led a life of less perfection. In purgatory we will realize how perilously close to damnation we were. We are right at the edge of the precipice about to fall off into hell. And we live most of our lives on the edge of that precipice. Our salvation was actually a miracle of grace. And yet we could have made it so much easier, should have shortened or even eliminated our purgatory, if only we had pursued a more serious life of prayer if we had only attempted to acquire contemplation, which is for all of us, because we are all called to be saints. So let us return to our main point, acquiring the prayer of contemplation. 
Let us make this the goal of our hour every day in prayer, and let us never omit that hour of prayer. Indeed, this is our life's work, and our main duty in life, to acquire a life of habitual prayer. In other words, to pray constantly. We must attempt to acquire contemplation. In fact, we must acquire it. Let us take this hour, then, each day we set aside, and devote to acquiring the art of prayer and putting it into practice. We begin with meditation, and we work towards contemplation. We want to become like that laborer who can just sit there in wonderful prayer. I look at him, and he looks at me. And let us close with a thought from St. John Climacus. Silence is the mother of prayer. <laughs>